Allison 96. Hey, six. Asher. Hello, Asher. We're sorry. You're not here today. He was here. I was just away. Oh, okay. Okay. No, I'm not. Yeah, you were the one who said. Oh, yeah. Well, it was. But anyway. It was her idea to say hi to you. I think it's a good idea. Okay. Now, this one is on functions and graphing functions. All right. Who knows what a function is? Conjunctions. No. <laughs> you try. Okay. All right. Let's learn. All right. Go on and put an S and a P. And I'm going to explain what those are in just a minute. Okay. Just like that. South and <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's say I have a square. Okay. Is the S for square? No, almost. Oh. And each side was five. Because for square all the sides are the same. Okay? So S actually means side. Oh. And P stands for perimeter. Perimeter. So okay? okay. So for example. If my sides are five, then what is my perimeter? Twenty-five. Twenty. Oh. Five times four, right? Because there's four of them. Try this one. If my sides are seven, what's my perimeter? Seven times four. Seven times Twenty-eight. Very good. And what if it's ten? Forty. Forty. And last one? Fifteen. Uh, oh, oh. Um, uh, wait, 45. 60. 60, very good. Because I, okay. I just ran it Now, like... so what this is called function is what you did to get this. What did we do? We multiplied. That's, so that's the, that's the, that's the function. So what do we multiply oh, by? Four. 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 Okay, so our function for this problem was times four. So if it was like a hexagon, you'd multiply by six. Yes. Yeah. Are they going to be hexagons? No, no. If it was a pentagon. Okay. So what the, what we say our full function is is um, four times s equals p. Huh. Does everybody understand what that means? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Four times our side equals our perimeter. Okay, so this is the formula, so to speak, for our function that we had to come up with. Okay? All right, let's try another one. That's fun. It is yeah. fun, isn't it? Okay. Come on. Damn it. What's the most fun is those order of operations. Yeah? Uh, so is this kind of like, no, I, those boxes, and it would say like, Oh, it was really weird. Oh, well. Okay. Oh, this is what I... What mean. is this one's function? 28. What? What? Nope. Oh, 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 I understand it. Okay. <laughs> Length. Okay, oh. I understand it. There's no L in them. Oh, There's nothing oh, to oh, tell oh, oh, for oh. this one. Um, the function is plus 15. Plus 15, okay? Plus 15 equals 20. 7 plus 15 equals? 7 plus 15 equals 23. 30, I think it was 22. 22, okay? Plus 15, plus 15. So what we do is L plus 15 equals M, right? Everybody see how we got that function? Okay, so whatever is in the middle, you just put L and then put that function right there. All right? Yes. And what the L and M stand for? It didn't. This time we didn't. It didn't actually have any thing that was supposed to. I think the next one does. Nope. I think the next couple ones do. Okay. Let's try another one. These are really easy. Yeah. These are amazing. All right. Now this one is set up different. Okay. okay. Don't let it freak you out though. They're doing it kind of sideways. Okay. And here's what they tell me. Okay. They're setting it up a, a lot different this time. What the heck? Okay. I that can't looks really out confusing, what doesn't it? It is. Okay, that looks really confusing. No. Wait, no? Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Alright. So basically, what you're gonna 
Is that a seven or a question mark before S that? Question mark, a seven. Okay. And then a question mark. Good. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay. So basically what you're going to do is these are the X's. X is two, X is three, or X is four, whichever one we choose. Okay? So if I choose, let's start with the first one. If I choose X being two, then I'm going to put it right here. Okay? So it would be three times... So the answer, three times two is six. Six minus two is four. four. Oh, so when we cool. put two in there, we get four. four. Okay? Good. Now let's try three and see if we're correct. Oh, that's easy. Let's put three in there. Three times three is nine. Nine minus two is seven. So we, that was oh, correct too. Simple. Let's that's try that 14. one. What? Okay. Shh. Okay. Four. Four times oh, three is three 12. Twelve. Twelve minus ten. two is ten. So we answered that by doing that. Did everybody that, get it? Yeah, yeah. that's really simple. Okay. <clears throat> Good stuff. All right. So sometimes they may be like that. Don't let them freak you out. Just, just answer it. Okay. Now, this is on graphing them, okay? And we're going to do two of them, all right? This is how we're going to graph them. Let me read off what it tells you. You're just doing kind of a, a right side of the graph. It says, um, how does this say this one? Function. Okay, I'm going to show you this table. This one's, again, S and P, sides and perimeter, okay? And they give me one, the perimeter would be four, Two, the perimeter would be eight. Three, the perimeter would be. Oh, uh. What's my function here? Times. Uh, times four. Very good. So this one's going to be. Twelve. Very good. Okay. And four, and my perimeter is going to be. Sixteen. Very good. Now, they're wanting me to graph this. Okay. Um, they're wanting me to put the length of the side over here. Okay, so one of them has to go down here, and then the perimeter is going to go over here. Now, how do you want to number these? Because it goes all the way up to 16. Let's not do go by one by one. By one. Do you want to do by twos or by fours or Let's what? Let's do by fours. By fours? Okay, so four, eight, 12, 16. Okay? Because that's easiest because it has zero. All right, and then sides, we just go through four. So we have to number these one, two, three, four. Okay? So one, two, three, four. All right. So when my side was one, then my perimeter was four, right? Yes. When my side was two, my perimeter was eight. When my side was three, my perimeter was 12. When my side was four, my perimeter was 16. What do you realize? It makes a diagonal well, line. Well, it's supposed to be diagonal. I quite, didn't quite do a great job with that. Okay? So it graphs a straight line. Okay? Yeah. So we're graphing that function. Okay? Everybody get it? Yeah. Okay. Let's do... One more. Um, one more. Okay? We're actually going to do one that's in your lesson practice. Okay? Which one is it? It's an E. Okay? So read, it long, read along with me. Here's what it says. The chemist mixed a vat of solution that weighed two pounds per quart. Two pounds per one quart. That's important information. Okay? Two pounds per one quart. Now, then it says create a table of order pairs for this function. Okay? So they're wanting us to do... Um, one, two, three, and four quarts. So we're going to put quarts, one, two, three, and four. They're telling us to graph it. And the information that they gave us is that it's two pounds per one quart. Okay, so does everybody see how I got this? Okay, mm -hmm. they gave me this information because this is how they want me to start the table. And they gave me that information by saying create a table of ordered pairs for this function quarts one two three and four though so they gave me that information and I had to put that in now in the very beginning they gave me the information of that the solution weighed two pounds per quart which I put one quart so they kind of help us understand so for one quart it equals two pounds okay 
So what is our function? Times two. Times two. That helps me because they didn't give me anything else. That's, that's all the information they gave me. Okay? So I have to figure out how many pounds two quarts is. Four pounds, right? How many pounds Six. three quarts? Eight. Eight. Very good. Now, we have to graph it because that's what they want us to do. So here's how they state that. Then graph the points on a coordinate plane using the horizontal axis, horizontal axis at, for quartz. So we need quartz down here. And using the vertical axis for pounds. Okay, everybody understands the difference between vertical and horizontal, right? Mm -hmm. Vertical means straight up, horizontal means left and right. Okay, so our quartz are one, two, three, and four, so I'm going to number one, two, three, and four. Our pounds are by twos, so that's how I'm going to label them over here as well. Two, four, six, and eight. Everybody understand how I'm doing that? Yes. Okay. Then you're just going to graph them, all right? For every one quart, it's two pounds. Two quarts, it's four pounds. Three quarts, six pounds. Four quarts, eight pounds. And you will graph that one as well. Okay? And that's how you do it, guys. So this is E on your lesson practice. So you do not have to do that. We did that together. So we okay. graph is going to be the answer? That's going to be the answer. You're, all this is going to be the answer. Okay? And here's the question it asks you. Would it be appropriate to draw a ray through the points? Why or why not? Sure. Yes. Okay? It just shows how it's, what is this going to portray to us? A ray. A ray. But what's it trying to, what is the graph trying to tell us? How it goes. And how it goes, like which way uh -huh. it's going. So each pound, each chord, it's going to keep going up, 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 up. That's kind of what it's telling us. Okay? Good job. That is. Line means it's going to go gradually up. Yes, it's going to gradually go up. Yep.